Let's first get to the news of the week. Uh, recently, we saw the comments from President Trump regarding the uh, the primary and the mail-in uh, ballot process that's been created because of the coronavirus. Do you share the president's concerns about how this process is going to go forward? I do. I do. Uh, you know, obviously, we have an all-mail-in ballot right now for the primary, uh, for the general. Uh, you know, people want to go and they want to cast their vote. They should be able to go out there and do it. Uh, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not excited about it. I know there's a group that just filed a, a federal lawsuit up in uh, Carson City. I know that's over in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals right now. And uh, you know, this is something that uh, Republicans and Democrats both want. So, you know, I, I saw all those ballots sitting in the garbage, and that's scary. That's scary. The uh, general feeling is that by having this mail-in ballot, it will at least allow more people to take part um, because of the any concerns about the pandemic and concerns about social distancing, et cetera. Wouldn't that actually help your case, for example, your campaign, to have the opportunity for more people to take, to take part? I think it's great that, you know, uh, we have a lot of people voting, you know, but the problem is, is, you know, there's also issues with that ballot harvesting, you know, people picking these uh, ballots up off the ground, or uh, I saw the, the pictures uh, at the condominium complexes with just, you know, tons and tons and tons of just ballots, you know, laying in there. Uh, you know, I'm not a fan of it. You know, I'm, I've always been a fan of, uh, you know, a federal voter ID card. You know, they have it in other countries. I think we should have it here. Let's talk about the, the race itself. Um, this is a primary. Before we even talk about uh, Congresswoman Lee, um, what do you believe helps you stand out from the other Republicans uh, that are running right now? Well, I'm, I'm the only true conservative, John, in this race. I came into this race obviously frustrated about Susie Lee. Uh, I'm running. I have one you know, one, one opponent uh, who has, uh, that we're running against, and he, he's not conservative. Uh, he was a one-time treasurer. He uh, tried to raise uh, more taxes uh, as a one-time Republican treasurer than any others in, in history. He tried to raise an airport tax, a meal tax, and, and a corporate tax, which, John, obviously, after this pandemic, if, if, if he was able to implement them, uh, it would have been very, very difficult for for many people out there, many small businesses uh, across the board, and tourism too. Imagine we had an airport tax, it would have crushed us. So, you know, I'm running against a uh, somebody who's complete opposite of me. You know, I'm a Second Amendment guy. John, I, I, I was the only person who got the uh, uh, NRA endorsement, and they don't take that lightly. You know, uh, Dan Schwartz, he wanted to uh, ban certain types of rifles, um, obviously, uh, you know, there's other things too. I mean, he's for amnesty. I'm for border security. Uh, you know, he was ne a never Trumper. And, and I've always been, you know, uh, supportive of our president. And I am still to this day. And, uh, you know, this is a seat that we know we can take back. Um, president Trump won it by a point and a half in 16. And, um, you know, it's a 50-50 split. You know, this is Republican, Democrat district, pretty much 50-50. And, um, you know, not going to Susie Lee just yet, but, you know, obviously, you know, uh, she's not working for the people. And, and that's why I got on board. I think uh, one of your ads, you were, I think you referred to Mr. Schwartz as a, as a, a liberal, something along those lines. Uh, I, I don't have it off the top of my head. You might be the first yeah. person I can remember that's referred to with that name, with that kind of uh, well, adjective. Well, they call me Big Dan. So on the ballot, just so you know, John, I'm Big Dan Rodeimer. It might be because I'm six foot seven, 300 pounds. Uh, and I don't like to call him Little Dan, I think, you know, but I will call him Liberal Dan. Okay. But, you know, the fact is, is you know, he's, he's, he, he is AOC on amnesty, he's Bloomberg on guns, and he's Pelosi on taxes. Uh, that's not what Congressional District 3 wants. What does Congressional District 3 want? Why don't you think they want Susie Lee again? Well, Susie Lee came in, and I was hoping she was going to do a good job. I really was. She came on as a moderate, or claimed that she was a moderate. And then she voted with the president 
I think it was the same amount, about 1.5% of the time. And that's and a fun fact. That's less than the squad. Right? That's not what CD3 wants. She came in, she, um, uh, right away, she started with the whole impeachment thing, the Russian collusion thing, you know, instead of getting things done. You know, I talk to Republicans and Democrats. You know, Democrats like me, Republicans like me. Um, you know, we have the same issues. You know, I go to these churches, you know, every weekend before COVID started, and I talk to the people. And, you know, the three major issues, you know, that I hear, you know, from majority of Democrats are they want good health care, they want a good paying job, and they want good schools for their kids. That doesn't sound much different than us Republicans, you know, and it's just getting the word out there. You know, they even told me, they said, you know, when I came on, they're like, damn, we want to, we want you on Fox News all the time. You know, the fact is, I want to be on Fox. I want to be, I mean, I would I have no problem being on Fox, but the fact is, is, I want to be on CNN. I want to be on MSNBC so that we can convey the message to, you know, to, to, to the other side because we have the same issues. Do you, do you have the same solutions? Well, right now, we don't have any. Right, right now, the, the president came in, okay? We have uh, the strongest economy we've ever had in U.S. history before COVID. It was incredible. OK, and then we have, you know, Susie Lee coming in, who's, you know, trying to raise taxes. OK, that's not good for small businesses. You know, I'm a small business owner. You know, I understand how, how hard it is to make payroll sometimes. You know, uh, you know, you know, the fact is, is, you know, I look at it like when I go to D.C., you know, I'm going to bring my business experience there. And, and right now, you know, Susie Lee, you know, she tried to revoke. Trump's tax cuts. She's doing everything opposite. She's, you know, unfortunately, and I hate to say, and I don't want to be, you know, uh, derogatory towards it, but, you know, at the end of the day, she's become Pelosi's puppet. And that's not what Nevada wants. Okay. That's not what Congressional District 3 wants. That's not what the United States of America wants. You know, we need jobs and, and, and we need to boost our economy after this COVID situation. Um, what would you say to those who suggest that experience, political specifically experience, is important in, uh, in someone who is uh, serving on behalf of their district, on behalf of the country. Uh, Mr. Schwartz has, as you mentioned, uh, done work up in Carson City. Uh, Susie Lee has now you know, almost two years or so in, in Washington. Talk about your political experience and how you think that would be useful uh, if you win. Well, I look at it like this. President Trump, did he have any political experience coming in? He was a business owner and he ran the, the country like a business. He's done a great job. And uh, yes, I went to law school. Okay, I went to Ave Maria Law School. Uh, I, you know, I helped write the school safety uh, bill. Uh, I have been involved uh, with the Republican Party. And, you know, the issues that people are coming to me with, they're not getting uh, rectified. They're not getting fixed. And Dan Schwartz, he's not what he's not what the Republican Party wants, but at the same point, he's not what CD3 wants. Um, you know, he has, like I said earlier, I mean, he, he tried to raise so many different taxes as a one-time treasure. Uh, his political experience uh, hurt him. And he's not even running on it. You know, he's running on, uh, he, he won't discuss his past. Uh, he claims that, you know, he's, uh, he's a Trumper, but, you know, he's never endorsed Trump. He's never uh, 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 went out there on the, on the floor uh, when, when we had the Republican nominee of President Trump. He was bashing the president then. And then he went out, I don't know if you heard about this, but he went on the Kevin Walsh show a week and a half ago and bashed the president for how he's handling COVID. And then he doubled up and said, I don't even know what the president's thinking putting uh, uh, Jared Kushner on the uh, uh, the COVID task force. I mean, that's crazy. You know, I think the president's doing a good job. I think he's doing a great job. And, um, you know, after this COVID situation uh, is over and we need to rebuild our economy, you know, I want to hold China responsible for this. I want those manufacturing jobs to come back here, okay, the United States of America, to, to Nevada. I welcome them. Is it more, just to follow up on that real quick, is it more important to support the president with regards to uh, the coronavirus response or is it more important to, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, be true to yourself? What if those things are different and people are allowed to be 
you know, have people are allowed to have a disagreement with the other side or your own side. Absolutely. And you can, and it's about getting along. And that's the thing, even, you know, when I come and I, and I go to DC, you know, it's about working across the aisle. It's about working with other people. And right now, Susie Lee's not doing it. You know, she's not working with the other side. She's just listening to, uh, to Pelosi over and over and over again. And that's not helping Nevada. It's not. Uh, I mean, right now, uh, with this pandemic in place, you know, uh, you know, we need to open in a safe, responsible way. You know, people are hurting right now, John. Uh, you know, people are losing their jobs. People can't put food on the table. People can't pay, pay their rent. They can't pay their mortgages. Uh, casinos are, 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 are closing left and right. Down in Laughlin, you know, they just lost 400 jobs from the oldest casinos. I mean, it, this is a scary time, but we, you know, these are, there's simple solutions to major issues, okay? And, you know, give I, I don't want to talk so give, me a, give, give me a simple solution to uh, the reopening. Getting, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah well, let's, uh, we're talking about obviously CD3. We get to, let's talk about Las Vegas. What's a simple solution to getting through the coronavirus and, and getting businesses back open again? Okay, so 11 of our 24 counties, okay, have less than 24,000 people, all right? Sisolak is going off of California. He's riding their coattails. They have 40 million people. John, we have 3 million people, all right? We need the leaders in these counties to, to open uh, in a way in which, you know, is safe and responsible. You know, we've been at, we were at phase zero for, for how long? You know, Governor Sislak would go on there and talk for hours, but he wouldn't give us, oh, it's the data. But he wouldn't tell us what it is, right? Um, you know, thank goodness we had a drive through at our restaurant because otherwise we would have been in serious trouble. Um, and, um, but I talk to people every day, you know, and I say, what are the issues? And before, when I was talking to Republicans and Democrats, you know, it was healthcare, you know, and, um, and schooling. But now it's, we need to reopen. We need to reopen and we need to reopen soon. Okay. Because, you know, we're going to go bankrupt. Uh, um, any other uh, things you'd like to address? I'm out of questions. You're out of questions. Come on. We can go for another 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a seat we have to win. Uh, you know, we have to take back, um, you know, I believe we will take this seat back. Um, you know, we've been running a great campaign and um, we're going to continue to win and uh, we'll take back Nevada and we'll, we'll, we'll help Nevada uh, after this coronavirus uh, pandemic is over. Um, we'll bring jobs back and um, uh, uh, I'm confident that uh, uh, we're, we're, we're going to, we, we were the, we were the hardest hit during the recession, the last recession, John, uh, and it took Nevada the longest to come back. I don't want that to happen. I want jobs now. I want jobs coming back now. I want, I want people to be able to, to get back to work. And, and that's what I'm going to fight for. So, John, Thank God bless time. Nevada and God bless America. <laughs> Thank you for the time, Dan. It's good to meet you and uh, good luck to you, sir. Thanks, pal. Have a great take, day. Take care.